In this video, I'm going to be going through epididymoorchitis. Epididymitis is inflammation of the epididymis. Orchitis is inflammation of the testicle. Epididymoorchitis is usually the result of infection in the epididymis and the testicle on one side. Let's talk about some very basic anatomy. At the back of each testicle is the epididymis. Sperm are released from the testicle into the head of the epididymis, which is connected to the top of the testicle. The sperm travel through the head, then the body, and then to the tail of the epididymis. The epididymis is where the sperm are matured and stored until they're eventually released into the vas deferens. Let's talk about the causes of epididymoorchitis. The key causative pathogens are E. coli, Chlamydia trachomatis, Neisseria gonorrhea, and mumps. Think of mumps in patients with parotid gland swelling and orchitis. Mumps tends only to affect the testicle, sparing the epididymis. Mumps can also cause pancreatitis. Let's talk about the presentation. Epididymoorchitis typically presents with a gradual onset over minutes to hours with unilateral testicular pain, a dragging or heavy sensation in the testicle, swelling of the testicle and swelling of the epididymis, tenderness on palpation, particularly over the epididymis, urethral discharge, which should make you think about chlamydia or gonorrhea, and systemic symptoms such as fever and potentially sepsis. The key differential diagnosis for epididymoorchitis is testicular torsion. Testicular torsion is a urological emergency that requires rapid treatment to avoid the testicle from dying. Both present similarly with acute onset of pain in one testicle. So if there's any doubt, treat the patient as though they've got testicular torsion until proven otherwise. And this will involve admitting the patient to hospital under the care of the urologist to consider emergency surgery. Let's talk about making the diagnosis. The key with epididymoorchitis is to distinguish whether the cause is likely to be an enteric organism, such as E. coli, or a sexually transmitted organism, such as chlamydia or gonorrhea. The features that make sexually transmitted organisms more likely, as per the NICE clinical knowledge summaries from 2020, are aged under 35, an increased number of sexual partners in the past 12 months, and discharge from the urethra. Investigations that can help establish a diagnosis are a urine microscopy culture and sensitivities, or MCNS, Chlamydia and gonorrhea NAAT testing on a first pass urine sample. A charcoal swab can be taken of purulent or pussy urethral discharge to look for gonorrhea and test for culture and sensitivities. A saliva swab for PCR testing can be used to look for mumps if suspected. You can check serum antibodies for mumps if this is suspected, and when you test serum antibodies, IgM suggests an acute infection and IgG suggests previous infection or vaccination. And finally, an ultrasound can be useful to assess for torsion or tumours of the testicles. Let's talk about management. Acutely very unwell patients or septic patients need to be admitted to hospital for treatment which will involve IV antibiotics. 
Patients with a high risk of sexually transmitted infection should be urgently referred to the Genito-Urinary Medicine or GUM service for assessment and treatment. Local guidelines will guide your choice of antibiotic. For patients that are at low risk of STIs, a typical choice is ofloxacin, which is usually first line, and this is used for 14 days. Alternatives to ofloxacin are levofloxacin or ciprofloxacin, doxycycline or coamoxiclav. Additional measures to help with symptoms and aid recovery are analgesia, such as paracetamol, supportive underwear to support the testicle and relieve symptoms, a reduction in physical activity, and abstaining from sexual intercourse. A tom tip for you, quinolone antibiotics such as ofloxacin, levofloxacin and ciprofloxacin are powerful broad-spectrum antibiotics often used for urinary tract infections, pyelonephritis, epididymoorchitis and prostatitis. They give excellent gram-negative cover. It's worth remembering two critical side effects as these may be tested in exams and are essential to inform patients about. And these are tendon damage and tendon rupture, notably of the Achilles tendon, and they lower the seizure threshold, so they need to be used with caution in patients who have epilepsy. Finally, let's talk about the complications. Epididymoorchitis can lead to chronic pain in the testicle, chronic epididymitis, testicular atrophy, subfertility or infertility, and the development of a scrotal abscess.